Hi guys and welcome to another fairy tale video. Today we are talking about the Goose Girl. It's a story I quite liked as a child and I read it a lot and I don't remember it. So we will read it together now and figure out what it was about. There once was an old queen whose husband had been dead for many years and she had a beautiful daughter. When the daughter grew up she was betrothed to a prince who lived far away. When the time came for her to be married and the princess had to get ready to depart for the distant kingdom, the old queen packed up a great many precious items and ornaments. Gold and silver, goblets and jewels. In short, everything that suited a royal dowry. For she loved her child with all her heart. She also gave her a chambermaid, who was to accompany her and deliver her safely into the hands of the bridegroom. Each retrieved a horse for the journey. But the prince's horse was named Falder and could speak. When the hour of the departure arrived, the old mother went into her bedroom, took a small knife and cut her finger to make it bleed. Then she placed a white handkerchief underneath her finger, let three drops of blood fall onto it and gave it to her daughter. My dear child, she said, take good care of these three drops, for they will help you on your journey when you are in need. After they had bid each other a sad farewell, the princess stuck the handkerchief into her blossom, mounted her horse and began her journey to her bridegroom. After riding an hour, she felt very thirsty and called to her chambermaid. Get down and fetch some water from the brook with my goblet that you brought along for me. I'd like to have something to drink. Hey, if you're thirsty, said the chambermaid, get down yourself. Just lie down by the water and drink. I don't like being your servant. Since the princess was very thirsty, she dismounted, bent over the brook and drank some water, but she was not allowed to drink out of her golden goblet. Oh God, she said. Then three drops of blood responded. Ah, if your mother knew, her heart would break in two. But the princess was quite humble. She said nothing and got back on her horse. They continued riding a few miles further. The day was warm and the sun was so sticky and hot that she soon got thirsty again. When they came to a stream, she called her chambermaid once more. Get down and bring me something to drink from my golden cup. For she had long since forgotten the servant's nasty words. If you want to drink, said the chambermaid even more hopefully than before, drink by yourself. I don't like being your servant. Since she was very thirsty, the princess dismounted lay down next to the running water and wept. Oh God, she said. Once again, the three drops of blood responded. Ah, if your mother knew, her heart would break in two. As she was leaning over the bank and drinking the water, her handkerchief with the three drops of blood fell out of her blossom and floated downstream with her ever noticing it. So great was her fear. But the chambermaid had seen it and was delighted because she knew that now she could have power over the princess. Without the three drops of blood, the princess had become weak. So, as she was about to get back on her horse named Falder, the chambermaid said, Falder belongs to me. Yours is the nag. The princess had to put up with all that. Moreover, the chambermaid ordered her to take off her royal garments and to put on the maid's shabby clothes. Finally, she had to swear under the open skies that she would never tell a soul at the royal court what the chambermaid had done. If the princess hadn't given her her word, she would have been killed on the spot. But Falder saw all this and took good note of it. Now the chambermaid mounted Falder and the true bride had to get on the wretched neck. Thus they continued their journey until finally they arrived at the royal castle. There was a great rejoicing when they entered the courtyard and the princess ran to meet them. He lifted the chambermaid from the horse, thinking she was the bride. Then he led her up to the stairs while the true princess was left standing below. Meanwhile, the old king peered out of the window and when he saw her standing in the courtyard, he was struck by her fine, delicate and beautiful features. He went straight to the royal suite and asked the bride about the girl she brought with her the one standing below the courtyard, and who she was. Oh, I picked her up along the way to keep me company. Just give her something to keep her busy. The old king had no work for her and could only respond, 
I have a little boy who tends the geese. Perhaps she could help him. The boy's name was Little Conrad and the true bride had to help him tend the geese. Shortly after, the false bride said to the young king, Dearest husband, I'd like you to do me a favor. I'd be glad to, he answered. Well then, let me summon the necker. I want him to cut off the head of the horse that carried me here because it gave me nothing but trouble along the way. However, she actually was afraid the horse would reveal what she had done to the princess. When all the preparations had been made and faithful Falda was about to die, word reached the ears of the true princess and she secretly promised the necker a gold coin if he would render her a small service. There was a big dark gateway through which she was to pass every morning and evening with the geese and she wanted him to nail Falda's head on the wall under the dark gateway where she could always see it. The necker promised to do it and when he cut off the horse's head he nailed it firmly onto the wall under the dark gateway. Early the next morning when she and Conrad drove the geese out through the gateway she said in passing Oh poor Falda, I see you hanging there. Then the head answered, Dear princess, is that really you there? Oh, if your mother knew, her heart would break in two. She walked out of the city in silence and they drove the geese into the fields. When she reached the meadow, she sat down and undid her hair, which was as pure as gold. Little Conrad liked the way her hair glistened so much that she tried to pull a few strands. Then she said, Blow wind, oh blow with all your might. Blow little Conrad's cap out of sight, make him chase it everywhere till I've braided my hair and fixed it so that it's all right. Then a gust of wind came and blew little Conrad's cap into the fields and he had to run after it. By the time he returned with it, she finished combining and putting her hair up and he couldn't get a single strand of it. Little Conrad became so angry that he wouldn't speak to her after that. Thus they tended the geese until evening when they set out on their way home. The next morning, when they drove the geese throughout the dark gateway, the maid said, Oh poor Falda, I see you hanging there. Then Falda responded, Dear princess, is that you really there? Oh, if your mother knew, her heart would break in two. Once she was out in the field again, she sat down in the meadow and began to comb out her hair. Little Conrad ran up and tried to grab it, but she quickly said, Blow wind, oh blow with all your might, blow little Conrad's cap out of sight, and make him chase it everywhere till I've braided all my hair, and fixed it so that it's all right. The wind blew and whisked the cap off his head and drove it far off so that Conrad had to run after it. When he came back, she had long since put up her hair and he couldn't get a single strand. Thus they tended the geese until the evening. However, upon returning that evening, little Conrad went to the old king and said, I don't want to tend the geese with that girl anymore. Why not? said the old king. Well, she tournaments me the whole day long. Immediately the old king ordered him to tell him what she did, and Conrad said, In the morning, when we pass through the dark gateway, there's a horse's head on the wall and she always says, Oh, poor Falda, I see you hanging there. And the head answers, Dear princess, is that you really there? Oh, if your mother knew, her heart would break in two. And thus little Conrad went on to tell the king what happened out on the meadow and how he had to run after his cap. The old king ordered him to drive the geese out again the next day and when morning came, the old king hid himself behind the dark gateway and heard her speak to Falda's head. Then he followed her into the fields and hid behind some bushes in the meadow. Soon he saw with his own eyes how the goose girl and the goose boy led the geese to the meadow and how she sat down after a while and did her hair that glistened radiantly. Before long she said, Blow wind, oh blow with all your might, blow little Conrad's cap out of sight and make him chase it everywhere until I've braided all my hair and fixed it so that it's all right. Then a gust of wind came and carried little Conrad's cap away, so that he had to run far and the maiden calmly combed and braided her hair. All this was observed by the old king. He then went home unnoticed 
And when the goose girl came back that evening, he called her aside and asked her why she did all those things. I'm not allowed to tell you, nor am I allowed to bemoan my plight to anyone. Such is the oath I swore on the open skies, otherwise I would have been killed. Although he kept on insisting and would give her no peace, she wouldn't talk. Then he said, If you don't want to tell me anything, then you certainly may let the iron stove over there listen to your sorrows. All right, said the maiden, I'll do that. Upon saying that, she crawled into the iron stove and poured her heart out and told it what happened to her and how she had been betrayed by the wicked chambermaid. Now, the oven had a hole on the top and the old king overheard what she said and listened to every word she uttered about her fate. He immediately intended to make everything good and had her dressed in royal garments and it was like a miracle to see how beautiful she really was. The old king called his son and revealed to him that he had the wrong bride who was nothing but a chambermaid. The true bride, however, was standing before him, the former goose girl. The king was delighted and ecstatic when he saw how beautiful and virtuous she was. Now a great feast was prepared and all their friends and the entire court were invited to attend. At the head of the table sat the bridegroom, with the princess at the one side and the chambermaid at the other. But the chambermaid was so distracted that she could no longer recognize the princess, who was dressed in dazzling manner. After they finished eating and drinking and all were in high spirits, the old king gave the chambermaid a riddle to solve. What punishment did a woman deserve who deceived her lord in such and such a way? Whereupon he told the whole story and concluded by asking, how would you sentence her? She deserves nothing better, said the false bride, than to be stripped completely naked and put inside a barrel studded with sharp nails. Then two white horses should be harnessed to the barrel and made to drag her throughout the streets until she's dead. You're the woman, the old king said, and you've pronounced your own sentence. All this shall happen to you. After the sentence had been carried out, the young king married his true bride and they both reigned over their kingdom in peace and bliss. The end. And since that is such a long story, I won't talk a lot now. I'm just saying thank you for listening and watching the video. Have a nice day and we will see each other in my next video. Bye!